In today's short video, I am going to be talking about a feature of my oscilloscope. If you look at the display here, we can see that it shows two traces. I have what's called a dual trace oscilloscope, but actually it's not a true dual trace oscilloscope because this only has one electron gun. What they do is they have electronic circuitry in here, but basically simulates having two electron guns. And there's a control on my oscilloscope which is called Alt and Chop. Now before I go on, if you do buy an old analog scope like this for audio work, I would recommend getting a dual trace oscilloscope because simply you can check both channels at the same time or you can check the input of one channel and you can check the output of one channel at the same time. I don't think it's a good idea to buy a single channel scope even though they are cheaper nowadays. So back to my actual subject now if we look here the switch is right here where my finger is pointing at and you notice it has also a third a position here called the add but I'm not going to cover that today. Now I've got the scope in the alternate mode and I'm actually feeding in a signal to each channel, just a basic sine wave. And what happens if you have this scope in alternate mode, one complete trace is drawn, and once that's completed, the other trace is drawn. So, basically, if you use the alternate mode with low frequencies, you can actually see the individual traces. And we can see it right here, it's like switching basically switching back and forth and it's really not a good way to look at low frequencies that's why for example I use the chop mode let me go ahead and put it in the chop position which is like that and now we can really see the trace that much more easily it's that much more easier to work with let me go ahead and put it in alt mode again again this is if you're using a uh, low frequency and if you got for example a low sweep frequency let's see if I can't in fact we can see it right there really really good that's why you don't want to use the alt mode for low frequencies um, basically you'd have to experiment with your oscilloscope and see which position is best for you but sometimes if you're new to this, new to using an old analog scope, and so this might be a puzzle for you. Oh, if you see traces like this, or say for example, um, you don't know exactly what this control is used for. Now the scope is in chop mode. I change the generated frequency. Let me put it in alt mode again so you can see the difference. Now with chop mode, what happens basically part of one channel, part of the waveform of one channel is drawn and then it switches down to the bottom, say for here the top and bottom switches to the bottom channel and it, it draws part of the waveforms really really fast. You can't really see it. It kind of like um, tricks you tricks you into making up for the chopped up basically the chopped up parts and this is all controlled by an electronic switch I think back in the day they used to call this a, like a, a chopper, something like that. Um, in the chop mode, you see this electronic switch works a lot faster than it does, for example, with the alternate mode. So, again, just to sum this up, I would go ahead and use the alternate mode for higher frequencies and the chop mode for lower frequencies. You just got to experiment around a little bit with your oscilloscope. Um, that's also what it's there for. And that's how, how you're going to learn it. So I just wanted to go ahead and bring that to people's attention. If they don't already know that, of course, if you're, again, like I always say, if you're an old pro or something like that, you're not going to watch this video because you're already going to know everything. This is more like for um, people that are getting used to an analog scope or um, beginners here. So thanks for watching. Hopefully it made a little bit of sense.